Welcome back to those who are rejoining us. I see lots of familiar faces and familiar names, shall I say. Ethna, I hope the, uh, the weather is better in County Mayo today than it is in Oxfordshire. Um, for the first time, as welcome to you too as well. Uh, this is a hoist dashboard training course. Uh, the course itself will, uh, will last about 20 minutes in terms of the presentation. Uh, during that process, Process, please ask any questions you have and we'll come to you at the end and we will go through the list of questions. There is a QA uh, button on your Zoom taskbar here, so type your question into there and we will process them and answer them uh, as soon as the initial presentation has been made. We're going to change direction a little bit today. Today, well, our sessions have been really focused on networking and networks uh, and products that sit on those networks like guest internet or TV systems or, or casting over the Chromecast. But one consistent theme that we've been talking about right throughout the process is how Hoist Dashboard can and does interface with third party integrations. And today focusing on reputation management and tomorrow uh, we're going to present a, a very fascinating plan on how to improve your overall reputation. Uh, these are examples of where Hoist Group can implement with or can integrate, sorry, with third party applications. Presenting today's uh, event will be uh, my colleague Francisco Martinez. Francisco is a key account director here within Hoist Group. Um, and is uh, very familiar and is a key driver of our dashboard project. So over to Francisco in a second. And just before we go to Francisco, I also appreciate that working in hotels at the moment is not an easy task. And I know you're all very busy people. So if you do have to drop out of today's session, we are recording it and we will make it available to you uh, at the end of the course. Uh, likewise, if you've got colleagues that you think should be part of the session or should see what we discussed, uh, then by all means, uh, send them the video once that has been shared with you. Uh, feel free to invite people to the uh, to the session tomorrow. I think this is going to be a really interesting uh, segment that we talk about today. So without further ado, over to you, Francisco. Thank you, Simon. Um, good morning, um, everybody. Let me share my screen. And um, welcome to this first session on reputation monitoring. Let me know when you can see the screen. Yes, Francisco, I can see your screen. It's a presentation. Perfect. So this is the first session on reputation monitoring. To be clear, there's going to be two sessions. On this first one, we're just going to look at how we can basically monitor and understand the metrics on our reputation in the dashboard. In the second session, we'll be making it a bit more sophisticated. We'll be looking at how we can use all that information to actually drive an improvement plan for our hotel. Okay, so we'll go with the first session. Um, the topics for today is first, I'm gonna run an introduction where I will explain a bit what it, reputation is and why it is so important. And then we will be looking first at the review performance widget, which is a very important one. Um, where we will extract the basic metrics to uh, monitor how well we are doing with our reputation. And then we'll look at the sentiment analysis widget. There's a third widget that we will leave for tomorrow. And that's uh, also very important. So let's uh, start. Um, what you see here is an image, um, a picture of a penitentiary system near Madrid in Soto del Real. It's written in Spanish, but I'm going to translate it for you. Um, it says, 14 years ago, I, uh, 14 years I've spent in this prison. I tried to escape four times with uh, Johnny the Hammer. Um, last time we tried, I remember very well, we got bitten hard by the guards near the wall. I couldn't sleep all night. Nevertheless, it's a fairly good prison. Um, you can easily get drugs, not so much violence. The only real drawback is that the walls were fairly high and every time we tried to escape, uh, they gave us a tough beating. For that reason only, I'm giving it one star, although overall, it's a fairly nice prison. Now you may all realize this is, um, this is a hoax. It's a real uh, review posted in, um, in Google. Um, nevertheless, it doesn't really seem to be a person that stayed in our prison. But if you look at um, the Google um, 
picture, you can see that this person actually has 52 more reviews. And the score actually goes up to 3.2 stars, which is not bad. Probably the prison director is not too worried about his end of year bonus if um, you let me get on with my joke. Uh, but jokes apart, I think this is a brilliant metaphor of the world we live today, a world in which customers expect anything and everything they can think of to be dissected, criticized, and evaluated over the internet in full detail. And they expect these reviews to be there and they seek them and they look for them actively. So how does that really impact hoteliers? Well, today more than 60% of hotel revenue, as we know, comes from online channels and this figure keeps growing. It may be starting to get close to 70% by now. Um, what are these? Yes, doing when they actually um, book online? Well, we know that on average, they're visiting 14 different travel-related sites uh, with an average of three visits for each of these sites and uh, nine searches on top. This is a lot of uh, browsing. And for the most part, what they are doing online on all these sites is basically checking your reviews and checking the reviews of your competitors. That is why reviews are so important because the vast majority of your revenue flows on the basis of what guests see online, the reviews they can evaluate about your hotel. And they does have a huge impact on your revenue. Now there's another question that's also very important. That's where do these reviews come from today? And you have a graph here which is basically an average overall market. And uh, it gives us a very clear picture where there is a party, which is Google, which is the leader. And not only are they the leader, but they're actually growing, still growing. They have been growing very fast uh, for the last three years, coming almost as, um, as an entering company and now reaching probably by now over 40% of total reviews on the internet. Google is a massive player. There is another very big player, which is booking.com today at 31.5, somewhere around 30% is where they normally fluctuate, fairly stable and very important for one reason. Booking.com reviews are always written by somebody that has booked a room in your hotel through booking.com. So they're verified and a lot more trustable than any of the others. That's why hoteliers normally play a lot of attention to booking.com. The third player today is um, TripAdvisor with um, a lesser number of reviews. You can see there overall their, um, their figure stays at somewhere around 12, 13%. And then there is, a, let's say a long tail of OTAs, um, social media, tour operators, that are also relevant because they may contain specific information about some of your source markets or niche markets um, that may be contained or located within that specific OTA. So overall, this is the picture. Now, remember one thing before we move forward, and that is every hotel has a unique footprint and the percentages can vary completely for a specific hotel as regards the average of the market. So um, you really need to look at your hotel and what is your footprint. This will start telling you a lot about who your customers are and how they behave online. Now, before we move to the dashboard, there is something important that must be in the back of the mind of everybody. So, and the question is, reputation reviews is very important. It affects my revenue heavily. Well, how much is that? how much is the business impact of reputation scores? And let me just move my image down for a second. This table here that you see here is basically coming from a study by Cornell University. It's well known, there are multiple studies, but this is by far the biggest and probably the most well known. It was run over 11 cities, multitude of hotels and taking um, at least 50,000 data points of review scores 
in each of those hotels, not in each of those hotels as an aggregate, um, to actually come with an answer for that question. What is the impact of my reputation in my red bar numbers? Okay, and the results was, were quite impressive. An increase of 1% in your review scores reflects on a 0.96%, that is more or less a 1% increase in red bar. Fairly significant. Let me for a second take just one thing. What is a review score and how do you compute it? Let's say for a moment that in every site that you visit, as you have seen with that example of the prison, everybody leaves one star, three stars, five stars on a scale. One to five is in Google. One to five is on TripAdvisor. It may be one to 10 is on booking.com. In each of them, it's a different number. Now, let's say you pick all your reviews, you normalize the scores so that they are all weighted on a similar scale, and then you average them, giving higher weight to the ones that are obviously closer to the present and lower weight to those that are back in the past. When you average all this together, taking into account those rules, you'll come with a review score. Let's say 90% over 100. That means you're a nine out of 10. That means you're fairly good. Now, what Cornell University did here is basically look at that review score and say, if my review score is higher within my category, how much does that affect my ref bar? And the answer was, as we have seen, 1% increase in, re in revenue score. In review score, it means 1% increase in ref bar. They also noted a couple of details that are also relevant. Most of this happens in AVR, well, only a bit happens in occupancy, meaning for the most part, hotels with better reviews are able to charge more to their customers. Although there is also an impact in occupancy, meaning hotels with better reviews get more bookings as well. The other important thing to note in this, in this table is that the effect is a lot more acute in the lower segments of the scale than in the upper ones. And I think the best way to understand that is that luxury brands have a lot less competition. They're well known. There is a lot of brand recognition and the service tends to be stable. So the impact of reputation is less acute. Whereas as you go down segment by segment to end up in the mid scale and the economy, in the lower segments, mid scale, for example, there are a lot of hotels. Brands are not that well known brand recognition is lower. And also, even if it's a well-known brand, the stability of the service tends to be less standardized. You are not 100% sure you will get the same service everywhere. What that means is that the impact of reviews on those segments are a lot higher. And before we finalize, let's just make some numbers so you understand it. I picked an example of a mid-scale hotel with 120 rooms. Let's say they have a 7.4 score on a zero to 10 scale. And let's say they have 90 euros as red bar. If they were to drive a plan to move that 7.4 to 7.77, which would be an increase of 5%, an increase of 5% in red bar would be equally appreciated and that would drive it very close to 97 euro. Over a full year, what does that mean? It means the revenue would have an additional 280,000 euro. If we think of an average flow through of 55%, it would mean this hotel would add 154,000 euro in profit. These are very big numbers. And that is the reason why we have to be very careful with our reputation scores, which we have to monitor closely and implement action to correct and improve on a regular basis. Let's go now to the dashboard. Let me stop sharing and now share. So here we are in the dashboard. This is the screen, as you know, of I've clicked here on the access to widgets and here I don't have any widgets. So I'm going to add some widgets related to reputation, particularly 
I'm going to add to the dashboard review performance, sentiment analysis and reviews. Okay. After I do this, I click on return to dashboard. And here I am. I'm going to leave this one here for a second. And I'm going to focus on this first. First, I have no data. This is normally just because I'm on today. And today, there seem to have been no reviews in this demo side. Normally, when you look at reviews, you would look at them on a long-term basis. So I like to put it on a year to date to see my scores. And um, this is the first result. Here I have 95.5% is my score. This is the review score we were just talking about um, a few minutes ago in the presentation. This is the sum of all my quantitative scores for my hotel over the last year added together and weighted proportionally. Now, this is important as well. You can check here, for example, in widget help, as you know, I have the details of this widget. And one of the details, which is very important, is this information is refreshed every four hours. The same applies to the other widgets for reputation as well. And this is very important because reputation is an information that we really need to control on a real time basis, almost. We need to really know when there is a new review understand it and even know if we have to react to it within the matter of a single day. So another thing we can do in this widget as well is obviously set some alerts as we can do for the others and that is also fairly important. For example, I can set an alert here for when the score goes below 95% and I have it sent to my email address. If I set it like this, every time I get a negative review that will be impacting my review scores, bringing them down from 95, which is basically where they tend to stand, I will get automatically an email alert saying something happened, take a look at it. Also very important in order to control my scores. But as you know as well, there are different views for all those widgets. And I'm gonna show you the advanced one for this widget. It is important because particularly for the reputation, all these views come with a different set of information. You have here the same score, 95.5 or 96 in a different display. On the side, you can see this score versus um, 30 days before. And you can see that I've actually increased a bit over the last 30 days, so that's good. Uh, now, if I move to the enlarged version, which is actually the one that I like to have, <clears throat> what I can see is a lot more. First, I can see here the split of the reviews by source. So for example, I've got TripAdvisor, where I have 76 reviews, I've got google.com, 113 reviews. I've got a lot of activity in Facebook, 86 reviews as well. And I've got small activity in Twitter. Let me see. This is five reviews and one in YouTube. Interesting. Now I can see where my reviews are coming from. Something to note, I have no booking.com. So this is, um, if it were a real hotel, it would definitely be a hotel that's not using that OTA. Something to note as well, particularly active in Facebook and some activity in Twitter as well. Interesting, that means a hotel that has a lot of activity in social media. Here I can see the same details, but basically compared on this review to last review, to last period, since I'm comparing on a 10 month rolling basis, what I can see is obviously for the 10 months, my number of reviews have been going down on all cases, but given the year we have had, that is um, expectable. Uh, and here again, if I go down, I can see actually the number of reviews for each period last year compared to this year. And I can see my reviews this year have been working well, except for the fact that between March and uh, July, there's almost no activity, obviously, 
according to the current situation. Um, I can check any specific data point to see how many reviews I had on this day or on that day. It's fairly complete. And as well as you are familiar already, I can basically compress or extend this graphic to see a particular instance. Let's say I want to see, for example, October. Well, if I do it like this, I can see a lot more detail for October and November. And if I compress November in this way, I can see my picture for October with a lot of clarity down to almost every day. Okay, well, that's fine. Final and most important, I have the widget drill down. And in this case, it contains very important information because if I go into the widget drill down, like I can see here, I can see each and every review as it is in this demo site, but tiered by the source. So I can see here, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, TripAdvisor, and Google. Here I have my rating, social media, Facebook and Twitter and also YouTube have no rating because as you know, there is no scoring in these uh, in, in, in this, uh, websites. Now I have here the sentiment and that is a completely different thing. Sentiment means that there is a artificial intelligence engine running on the background that actually processes the text in these reviews to understand what is the sentiment, whether it is positive or negative. And it scores each sentence, each word, each expression in order to get a feeling of the overall sentiment of the, um, of the review. This gives me a different score. It represents the percentage of reviews, the score assigned by this sentiment engine to all these reviews. While I see these, I can also see obviously the number of reviews, but also here the all time number of reviews. And I can see here, if I scroll, the number of these reviews which had a positive, a neutral, or a negative score. I can see it's color coded, and I can see I only have one negative score in Google here, which definitely I would like to see. Now, YouTube is obviously not scored in any of the instances because not being any text and not being any rating, I do not have any score, but it's still collected. And that is very important because if I have a video on YouTube, I do need to go and see it. Okay, this gives me the full picture of my reviews in terms of where are they coming from and how are they being scored. Now, this is all very good. I already have a lot of information, but I do need something more. And for that, I'm going to take this out for a second and I'm going to go into the sentiment analysis widget, which you can see here. I have here a different score. As we said, this score comes from text analysis by an artificial intelligence engine of what is written in those reviews. Now, let me show you the advanced view because that is particularly what I like. It gives me the overall set of reviews with a tiering of what, which ones are positive, negative and neutral. By the way, I've got 90% of them are positive, which is a very good figure overall. This is a hotel that has an outstanding um, set of reviews. Um, even if it's a demo site, it, it stands as very high scores. And on the side, I've got some very interesting information as well. During this text analysis, what I'm gathering as well is what are the specific aspects of my hotel that are being remarked as particularly either positive or negative? What are my guests saying is very good or bad? And I can see the remarks here. Hotels are particularly happy with my cleanliness, with my position, location, and with hospitality, which is an overall measure of staff uh, attitude. Those are very good scores I have for that. Now, however, even though my scores are very good, there are still some things that 
my guests tend to dislike, particularly they complained about digital services and about organization. Organization stands for overall coordination and service delivery. Okay, points to take a note. I have also the possibility of seeing this on an enlarged view. Okay, it scrolls down here and I have basically the same information, but now per source and per language. But I will take you to much more interesting place. This is the drill down of the sentiment evolution. First of all, <clears throat> let me show you here. The calendar um, um, is populated only for the first two months of January. Being a demo site, it's a lot of work to actually populate it overall. So bear with me that this is what I will show you. If I wanted to see you, normally you see it like that, but uh, take into account that we haven't populated um, the month of November yet. So I'm gonna show you uh, like this. Here as headers, you have actu actually the definitions of the different categories as regards the service of my hotel. This is what the artificial intelligence engine is actually processing and extracting as separate categories that are being evaluated by my guests. I'll go through them uh, carefully. One is general, which really um, means or collects all the general sentiment about my hotel. Um, rooms pertains obviously to everything that's related to the room and how the guests perceive the room. Position means location, whether guests perceive that the location is good or bad. There's not, there might not be much you can do about your location, but there is definitely a mismatch if your guests complain about your location on how you mark it, on to who you mark your hotel, because that has a lot of impact. Services stands for all the services that are Aside, of course, of the ones that are particularly um, scored individually here, all the other services normally services to the room, like pillows, like um, um, a specific um, requests, um, in-room service, etc. Everything that's related to your um, room services. Food is obviously whatever is related to um, restaurant. Hospitality is a measure of the overall attitude of your staff. Cleanliness is related to the overall cleanliness of the hotel and the rooms. Cost is a measure for price quality perceived for your guests. Internet relates to the internet service. Safety organization obviously is what we said. The overall coordination of the services in your hotel and how smooth delivery is. And digital services refers to TV, mobile, and tablet applications that you may be putting together at the disposal of your guests. Now, what is happening here is I can see for every day and for every review, which of these elements of my service are being addressed by my customers. And if I look, so let me display here the full two months. Okay, so you can see you can see here all the information as it goes up. You can see that for different um, days, I have different comments. They're all tend to be very positive, but I have already here one that is negative, another one uh, and another one. And I can say that services is particularly the area where I have more negative comments, although I have at least one also in hospitality in rooms and another one in costs. Okay, this already tells me which specific aspects do I need to address from my hotel, what is good and what is not. And it also lets me scroll overall the whole period of uh, reviews I may want even up to several months and have a quick view of everything that's happening there and how those reviews were actually impacting or uh, scoring particular aspects of my service. This is very useful and we will discuss it tomorrow in terms of understanding how I can improve my services overall. But for today, we're going to leave it here and open the field for questions and answers. 
Thank you very much. Thank you.